Thank you for tuning in. This is the Rice Crypto Show, and I'm your host, Rice. And on today's episode, I am joined by Jeremy Kaufman, who is the CEO and founder of Library. Now, this is actually my second interview with Jeremy, and I will provide links down below for that first interview. If you haven't watched it, I definitely encourage you to, because you'll learn why Library is my favorite decentralized content sharing and publishing platform. So I wanted to do a follow-up with Jeremy, kind of get a little bit of an update on what's been going on with the library platform and share that with you in today's video. But before we get into it, this is your first time ever checking out any of my content. I do encourage you to explore my channel. Make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with my videos as they come out. And be sure to follow me on Library, where I post exclusive content. And I'm going to have links down below for my Library channel. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into today's video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, today I am joined by Jeremy Kaufman, the CEO and founder of Library. Jeremy, how you doing today, man? Great, man. I am thrilled to be here with you. I really appreciate you taking the time. And in case people aren't aware, I did do a previous inter with you, interview with you, and that's been about three months ago, um, considering it was like right at the beginning of January, so it's been right over 90 days. So it's kind of a perfect time to do a follow-up. And I'll have links down below for that first interview, and I'll have links down below if you're watching this on YouTube. So you, can, so you can check out my library channel where I do post exclusive content. And that's what I was telling Jeremy a little bit ago is that I'm trying my best to promote library equal to YouTube and, and what I'm doing is posting exclusive content on my YouTube, or excuse me, on my library channel to encourage people to be checking out these platforms, especially with all the censorship that's going on. And what's crazy, man, is that censorship has picked up so much since you know I interviewed you the last time because... The reason we came into connection was because around Christmas time, the crypto YouTube purge, my channel was affected. And I had some issues with the Steemit uh, blockchain with DTube, not keeping my videos on as well. And that's when I learned more about the library platform, started using it, and I'm super happy with it. So that's why I wanted to bring you on. Um, one thing that I'm really excited about is that, and we'll get into more detail, is that I'm a part of your guys' alpha program Normally, you guys have a YouTube program where you allow people to transfer their YouTube content to library, and I'm working on the reverse fashion where I'm posting my content on library and it gets uploaded to YouTube. So I'm really proud to be a part of that program. But aside from that, man, like since we talked, what kind of stuff have you guys been working on to develop the platform since you've had like an increase of content creators and users? Yeah, it's crazy. It's hard to believe it's only been three months because I feel like an incredible amount has happened. I mean, yeah, we, it has. yeah, I mean, I think library TV traffic has climbed, you know, like four X or something like that uh, in, in that time period, maybe more. And we crossed, uh, you know, we crossed a million uh, monthly unique visitors last month. Of course, that's not a feature, uh, but that is an exciting milestone uh, yeah. for us to hit. And literally 10 minutes uh, before joining this call, uh, we shipped a new feature, uh, which is, password-based uh, login, which we actually didn't have. We had email-based login, and then it would keep you logged in. You'd have to go back into your, your email. And that's because, you know, something that we do, and anyone who uses Library for any, any amount of time will see this, is we move fast around here, right? And as soon mm -hmm. as we have something that's better than nothing, we ship it, and then we make it better, and then we make it better, and, and so on. So, you know, you'll see a, a pretty, a pretty uh, blistering pace. Um, so what else? So there's this uh, Library First Publishing, uh, which is a big thing, and we're thrilled to be working with you on, on that one. Um, we've completely revamped and redesigned a bunch of the pages. Uh, there's an unlock tip uh, function that, that shipped, which is a, another one I'm sure you've been appreciating. So it's yep. much easier to get, uh, to get your, uh, your coins out. Uh, we'll be announcing um, very soon, uh, this month, an ability to uh, get uh, LBC via uh, credit card and other things in the app. That's coming out, uh, that's coming out very soon. Uh, I should probably be like pulling up our blog right now because I know that there's a bunch of things uh, missing because you know we ship something new like every week. 
Uh, yeah, no, you guys have been moving fast. I mean, that's, it's, and I feel kind of bad, even though I'm using the platform regularly, it's kind of hard to keep up with all your guys' developments because you are moving so fast and I'm trying to also do the content creating. Yeah, that yeah. Makes yeah. it hard. There's a whole new analytics page with reports mm -hmm. and, and graphs and that's getting another pass this week. So you'll see yet another round of improvements uh, in, this, uh, in this area going live probably sometime next week. Well, with the improvements, so like when I first started using the, the alpha program to do the library to YouTube, yeah. there was a lot of little hiccups, but, a, but that's why it's an alpha testing program and helping right. to work through those hiccups. But even in just a short amount of time that I've been using that, those developments have been crazy. Plus, it's helped me to learn a whole lot more about creating content because there were some things that I wasn't aware of or some things that I wasn't utilizing, like encoding my videos. Um, I, I'm just cause I'm, I'm, I've been learning all this by myself and yeah, it was something yeah, that I wasn't yeah. aware of. And I would try to upload a video that was over a gigabyte and then, I, then Tom would hit, hit me up and tell me, you know, Hey, why don't you try this? And then gave me the frequently asked questions. I mean, you guys would make this thing so easy. And I love the fact that it's community driven because you're taking the feedback from other people. And even as you mentioned before we started, um, you started like creating more content so that you could try to see how it is for us so that you could try to help make library a better platform give a better user experience not only for people who are viewing content but for people who are uploading and publishing content so i really love that man yeah thanks i i feel i appreciate it i feel almost a little bit dumb that i wasn't doing it uh sooner because i know i know you someone if someone came to me and said how do you learn something jeremy i'd say well you learn by doing it right that is the best way to learn is you know you get in there and you start doing it that doesn't mean you don't read books I've, I've gotten plenty of knowledge from books but like you don't you don't good get good at anything by just reading about it you have to read about it and you have to do it right right and uh so i yeah i have a channel now i'm on library you can follow me at uh kauf j k-a-u-f-f-j one as a as a creator i know that you're supposed to uh casually work in name drops and mentions yeah. of your, of your and channel. I'll put, so I'll just, put links down yeah. below for your yeah. channel and library. That's right. Follow me, follow me on library. Uh, and, and yeah, we, you know, we want to make all this stuff as easy as we can, you know, and in terms of some of this encoding stuff, you know, YouTube does that library software now does that uh, directly for you in, in some of the releases that you're using. Although even on YouTube, you can get benefits from, um, from doing it yourself rather than, um, rather than having them do it for you. But yeah. Right. It, it makes it makes for a quicker upload process is what I yes. realize. Yes. And you know, that definitely helps and you're not utilizing so much space on our servers, which is something I'm starting to learn more about. Yeah. Um, because you know, obviously this stuff does take space. And that's 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 where I definitely encourage people to check out that first interview I did with you because you do a great job of explaining all the decentralized and centralized aspects of what it takes to be a content sharing publishing platform because it's almost impossible to be completely decentralized. But you guys are, from what I can tell with my research, the most decentralized of this type of platform out there, which is the reason why I've been so supportive. And I appreciate you guys being supportive. It makes me feel like I've never really gotten anything from YouTube. Obviously, they're a big company. But for me to get like the interaction that I'm getting with um, your staff and everybody on the platform, it's been amazing. I mean, um, I, have, I find a lot of value in what you guys are doing. And that's why I'm trying to do my best to try to promote what you guys are doing. Because um, when I said that the censorship was picking up, some people may not be aware of it. At the beginning of what was happening with this pandemic and people starting to social distance and self-quarantine, um, YouTube uh, was starting to minimize how many employees they were having at their office. And so with that being said, YouTube put out these announcements via Team YouTube saying that they were going to go on an automated system that, that – uh, it's very likely that their AI will possibly flag and take down videos of yours. Um, these videos can also not even go against community guidelines and there's really not much you can do. And now I'm seeing this happen to um, what kind of happened around Christmas time happen again. Now, I mean, a uh, crypto crow is one of the most recent, I think he had his channel completely taken off and it was returned. But, and, I, and there are some people that are looking into some laws um, about memberships because, uh, and, and encouraging content creators on YouTube to become a member. Because when you're a member, it changes the type of law that you're under huh. and the type of relationship that you have with a company. Um, and supposedly, we're, um, the people who are paying for that service are also getting faster uh, information from YouTube about what's going on. So like someone 
who's not paying for the premium service and doesn't really do much for their ad revenue is not really going to get much response from YouTube itself. So even though you guys are you know still small but growing, I appreciate the fact that you guys are being very personalized and that you're and that you are community driven because community is so important in in what we're doing, especially in the blockchain space. Yeah, I mean, look, the you know, the business opportunity of of library is huge, it's tremendous. But I think everyone that works at this company and who's in, and 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 the you know one hundred thousand x times the number who work here, people in the community like that are engaged in the community, they they do this because they love it. Like we all love it. We're all passionate about this. So that same thing that you see, you know, in the in the in the people who get excited about Bitcoin because you know people can have control over their money. Like we're excited about this because people can have control over their, their you know content publishing and their content identity instead of having to hand it over to you know another party and, and trusting that they're gonna you know, act benevolently, you know, who then in turn hands over their keys to, you know, some algorithm that's completely opaque. And then it makes mistakes all the time. And they're like, Oh, whoops. You know, it's just like, come on. Like, why does anyone want to put up with this? No, I, I agree. I agree. But unfortunately people, it doesn't seem like a lot of people really truly care about this, this topic of censorship uh, or they would be going to more of these platforms. I mean, you are seeing an increase in yeah. traffic, which is good, but I mean, I would like to see it pick up to the point that it's really kind of, putting you guys to the test of what you guys can handle. Yeah. And you know, I will say in terms of the censorship topic, I think something that can help. And when we, cause I'm like a community, I guess I'm like a communicator on this, on this subject. And you know, from talking to people, I found that if you say censorship, you know, a lot of people hear that word and they map it to like, Oh, like people who are saying bad things, getting in trouble, right? Like that's what, right. You know. Okay. And like another way of putting it that I find, you know, say ask someone, you know, well, like, would you rather choose what you get to watch or would you rather Mark Zuckerberg? You know, would you rather choose what you get to watch or would you rather like Jeff Bezos? Like, who do you want to be making those choices for you? Do you want to make them for yourself or do you want someone else to make them? And, you know, you present it to someone that way and almost everyone's more supportive of that, right? Like, no, I don't want someone else to choose what I get to watch. I want to choose what I get to watch, right? You know, and that, and, and so I think that like, I, I think that that's um, like, if we can present it to people that way, I think a lot more people get on, get on board with us and get on board with this side of like, let's, you know, let's choose for ourselves. And that makes total sense. And it kind of goes into what you were saying, uh, what, what I read on the website about um, library saying it's time to take back control from YouTube and Amazon. So with that being said and everything you said, what would you say to the average YouTube user of why they should use a platform like library? And then to follow that up, what would you say to a content creator who's not using library that the benefits of using this platform are? Yeah. I mean, so I, let's start the, the viewer first, which is like, first, I mean, listen to the creators, listen to people like rice, right? Like they'll tell you that messed up. If you haven't encountered already, they'll tell you that, that messed up stuff happens, that YouTube is opaque and secretive, they don't communicate, they don't tell you what's going on. They take you know, very large cuts of money uh, to move a file from point A to point B and you know, have a channel identity around it. I'm not, I'm not saying that what they do is easy, but like, you know, they're, they're making a lot of money uh, you know, doing it. And it's, it's, not, it's, it's something that sort of like can be commodified, if that makes sense, which is good if you, you, we want that, that reduces costs. Uh, so, uh, you know, there are now alternatives, right? We've designed a, I don't want to make, I don't want to get too nerdy about it. I guess I'm already maybe talking too long from just trying to convince someone, <laughs> convince mm -hmm. someone quickly, but like we made a te technology that leaves you actually in control. Like it's, it's truly different from everything that's come before. We've tried to make the same user experience, but now we do not have to trust that party in the middle to make that choice about who gets to see what, right? We've put it in the end people, in the hands of the people, right? And that's, I don't know, man, that's a beautiful thing. That's great. Uh, that's a great you know, answer. And, and, and so that's what I want to get people to see. Um, and that's also why I really like that framing because like, look, that's the choice you're making right now is you're saying, I want to trust, I, you know, I want to trust these people who we shouldn't be trusting to decide, you know, to decide these things for us. And on, on the creator, I mean, I don't know, do, do YouTubers need, the, <laughs> do YouTubers need to be persuaded? Like YouTubers are on YouTube, I think, because they feel somewhat captive. I think almost every YouTube creator has some kind of issue. Right, so my, my request to YouTube creator is, look, library doesn't claim that we can replace YouTube tomorrow. Like we can't, we don't have all the eyeballs, all your audience isn't gonna come with you overnight. What we can do is keep your content safe so that, and you can know, this we can promise you, it's never gonna go anywhere, right? You, you've got it, you're in control now, we can promise you that, right? And then 
check it out and see where it goes, right? We basically give you a heads you win, tails nothing happens proposition to go through uh, the YouTube Sync program. That's the kind of opportunity you should be looking for in life, right? That's a great bet. And just check it out. And you might have an experience like Rice where you see that, hey, gosh, these guys are building something that's pretty, pretty cool and decide to be part of it. You might float along. We've had creators who joined a year and a half, two years, and they just kind of silently never participated. And then all of a sudden, they kind of noticed that, uh, that you know, something was going on and uh, decided to get more involved. So, you know, it never, it doesn't really hurt to go through it and you might find that you like it. And so, you know, why not? That's like cool, man. Minutes. You know, yeah. what I'd like to see is I'd like to see more non-crypto related channels moving on. Right? I know we're seeing yeah. it slowly, but I would like to see a more influx of some of these other different channels, you know, because I mean, I don't want to see these platforms being limited to just the crypto blockchain sphere. I mean, yeah, so much although I, content I, creators I, in general. I totally agree with you. And the crypto blockchain sphere, I think part of the reason we see more of that is they're talking about us more than some of the other creators. You know, we, if you look at the list and we just put out this blog post called progress at, at library. And uh, it's, if you follow, go to the library channel on library it's near the top and you, uh, you can see this list of the top 20 YouTubers. I mean, there's, it's not crypto YouTube, right? You've got, you've got really big science, you know, uh, and engineering creators like three blue one Brown, Neurotasium, you have people like Jordan Peterson. There's a, 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 a deep list of, of people that are on the platform that aren't, you know, crypto creators. Right. No, I agree. I agree. And I would like to see. So, I mean, I've been trying to reach out to a lot of different content creators, not just crypto and trying to get them to check out this platform, at least just so they know that they can have their content backed up somewhere at the very minimum. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I think there again, it's, it's, we, it's probably, it's that same, you know, I, you know, you tell me blockchain's involved and I'm, I'm likely to be like at least a little bit more curious, you know, for some people, blockchain is weird and, you know, and scary, right? And so uh, it's, you know, some, uh, for a lot of people, for a lot of our audience, library is their first blockchain experience, right? Uh, they haven't necessarily used, you know, Bitcoin or done something like that before. They came on because, oh, you know, they were concerned about, you know, free speech or other, other issues. Right. Uh, and that's how they end up learning about it. So I think that, and this is something, you know, we're always trying to work on the right way to talk about it. But when we talk to creators, try to find like, what's their... You know, what are they concerned about? Is blockchain a positive for them or is it like a negative? And if it's a negative, then I don't, don't, even, don't even mention it until it comes up, you know? Totally agreed, man. Totally agree. Well, dude, I appreciate it. Well, uh, before we wrap things up, was there anything I didn't cover that you want to talk about? Uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I would say uh, I can give out, uh, I can give out a uh, code to your listeners if people want a little, little extra bonus for enjoying the yeah, interview. Yeah, that'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. All right. We'll just do... Uh, Rice Crypto uh, 413, since that's the, the date of the day we're doing this interview here. So, okay. so Rice, Rice Crypto, Crypto 413. 413. Okay, well, I'll, yeah. I'll have that go across the screen as well. All right, sweet. So very cool, man. I appreciate it. Now, like I said, I'm going to have links down below for everything we talked about. Um, Jeremy, if you don't mind lingering for me after I'm done with this, just hold on one second. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. If you're watching this on library, make sure you're following me. Always give a thumbs up, like the videos and comment. Share this with your friends and family. And as always, I encourage you to be the change by practicing change. And I love you all.